Hey, second graders. Today we're going to read chapter 11. Arithasan Dorsatham. I wonder who or what that is. Do you think we'll find out? In the obscure murk of the log's interior, Poppy crouched tensely, slouching slowly out of the dark, came a flat-faced beast with a blunt, bl blunt black snout and a fierce grizzled whiskers. Its eyes were heavily lidded as though it had just had awakened. The creature moved ponderously with a waddle and a rattle. Its stench was powerful enough to make Poppy clamp her paw over her nose. The moment of the animal caught sight of her, it came to a clumsy stop and blinked. What the bee's butt are you doing here, furball? It snarled. Poppy, wishing she knew what kind of animals she was facing, could only whisper, It's just me, sir. The name's Aerith, the animal snapped. Arisathon Dorsatham, but I just get called Aerith. What's more, I'm a grump and you just woke me up, so don't try to slick me down with slug slop. I'm truly sorry I woke you, Mr. Aerith, Poppy said. What are those things on your head, the beast growled. Flat balloons or ears? The name's Aerith. E-R-E-T-H. And please stop your barking. Please, Aerith. It's not me barking. Then who the frog flip is making that racket? It's a fox at the entrance to the log. Some idiot friend of yours? Oh, no, sir. Not a friend. Who the dung beetle bit you anyways, Aerith suddenly demanded. You're so small it can hardly see you. I'm a deer mouse. A girl deer mouse. I didn't ask what you are. I don't give a bug bathwater about that. I asked for your name. Poppy. Poppy? What kind of idiotic name is that? Please, it's a family tradition. We're named after flowers and fruits. Arithazon Dorsatham is my name. Latin name. But you kids don't learn Latin anymore, do you? I don't know what Latin is, sir. I mean, Aerith. The bee sniffed loudly. The whole forest is full of idiots like that fox. During this conversation, the fox had continued to bark and whine occasionally, even digging furiously at the log entrance. Pop, pop, snop, Aerith cried, or whatever your idiot name is. Would you tell that fox to shut up? It's Poppy, and if I tell him, I don't think he will. Why not? He wants to eat me, Poppy said faintly. Eat you? Yes. Jerk, Aerith said scornfully. But then all meat eaters are jerks. Ever notice that? I mean, when did you ever meet? And here's a picture of the fox and Poppy and I mean, did you ever meet a meat eater who wasn't loud and aggressive? Did you? Never mind. Just get out of here and leave me alone. I can't, Poppy cried. Why the bat bills can't you? I just told you, Poppy said. If I go out, he'll eat me. Look here, Aerith cried. Whatever your idiot name is, do you have any guts? Please, it's Poppy. Oh, weasel wonk, I don't care what it is. All I'm saying is if a creature can't take care of himself, he has no business sneaking into my house, waking an old coot like me in the middle of the day, asking for my help. I never asked you for your help, an exasperated Poppy replied. Can't you understand anything? That fox chased me. Do you think I like being in here? It stinks. Aerith blinked. Oh, all right, he growled. I suppose I better talk some sense into that meat mauler. Just get out of my way, he snarled as he began to waddle forward. It's your lookout, not mine, if you get pricked by one of those quills. Poppy's heart's clutched. Did, did you say quills? She stammered. Of course I said quills, furball. Yes, but... But What? Poppy was dizzy with fear. Her knees shook. She found it hard to swallow. What are you? Don't you have eyes? Eris screeched. Or are those spots on your face buttons? I'm a porcupine. The word turned Poppy numb. She could hardly breathe. She could not sink. Flop your Poppy, Eris bell. Will you get your free fucking self out of the way? Poppy dived against the pulpy wall of the log and squeezed herself flat to allow Aerith room. Even so, the porcupine waddled by its quills raked across her belly like a rusty comb. Snoring. Never, despite all she'd confronted, had Poppy been so terrified. Aerith over continued to make his ponderous way toward the log's entrance, where the fox was still barking and yelping. Poppy felt sure that once the fox was disposed of, the prickly monster would turn on her. First he would shoot her with his quills, next he would stab her, then he would skewer her, finally he would chop her into tiny bits and eat her. For a moment, Poppy considered offering herself to the fox. If the choice was between being swallowed in one gulp or being tortured by a porcupine, surely death by fox would be preferable. 
Poppy stared into the darkness of the log. Perhaps there was an escape hole, but frozen by the terror of her predicament, she could not move. Instead, her eyes turned toward the entrance, certain she was about to witness some ghastly carnage. Sure enough, when Aerith reached the log opening, Poppy heard him screech, Fox, you brain bag of bones, what's all this hullabaloo? Can an old creature get some quiet in his own house? I'm sorry, Aerith, Fox returned in a voice that was best sniveling. I didn't know you were here, just trying to grab a mouse who ran into your place, a snack. Nothing more, I didn't mean to bother you. No harm meant, just a midday nibble. Dang, nag, don't nag me about your nibbles, you nitwit, Aerith bellowed. When I say get lost, I mean it. Now, Aerith, let's be... Fox did not finish the sentence. Instead, Poppy heard Aerith cry, I said get, Broomtail. This order was followed by a whack, a yelp of pain, a frantic scramble of paws, concluding with a barking and whining that grew faint with amazing rapi rapidity. Fox, Poppy was sure the fox was being devoured, but more frightening still, she saw the porcupine wheel about to start a waddle back the, down the log in, the, in their direction. Poppy panicked. She turned and fled toward her one hope of escape, the log's other hand. The farther the log went, the more foul-smelling it became worse. She had increasing difficulty seeing where she was going. Sure enough, she slammed into the log's far end. There was no escape hole. Stunned and unsteady on her feet, her heart beating so fast she was sure it would burst, a terrified poppy turned to confront the porcupine. Her only remaining hope was to try and slip by the beast, though poppy knew she risked a severe shredding, but she was certain it was her only chance. Slop, pop, bebop, the porcupine cried, what the snakes? What are you? Come out of there! Gasping for breath, Poppy braced herself against the rear of the wall of the log and got ready to bolt and die. Aerith's face grinning hideous, hideously loomed out of the dark at her. Poppy, he cried, you wretched excuse for a runt. Why in the devil are you hiding in my toilet? End of chapter.